The term hype job is one that is often abused in the YouTube boxing community. It's a term that's often attributed to just about any fighter that spends some time in the spotlight and generates a decent amount of fandom, who ultimately loses when stepping up in class. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a term that tends to get overused a bit. However, there are certain fighters in boxing who definitely sum up that term, particularly when it comes to the heavyweight division where fighters tend to get the most press when they burst on the scene. One heavyweight contender who stands out to me in this regard is one who is all but forgotten about these days, but several years back I specifically remember having quite a lot of hype. That heavyweight contender is Seth Mitchell. Nordic Warrior here, hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome back to my retrospective boxing series. Today we're going to be looking at the brief yet interesting career of the American heavyweight prospect Seth Mitchell. So during the early 2010s, I think we can all safely say that the heavyweight division was practically ruled by Vladimir Klitschko. His older brother Vitaly was in his 40s and on his way out of the game, and Vladimir despite aging himself was starting to really establish his reign. During that time, the American heavyweight scene was relatively bleak, with most American boxing fans practically ignoring the division altogether, all but accepting European control. However, here and there, an American contender would come along. There were several American contenders over the years of all shapes and sizes, who while having some ability, were never really able to impress American audiences or the American boxing media. You had guys like Calvin Brock, Eddie Chambers, Ray Austin, Tony Thompson, and Chris Bird, each of them as disappointing as the last. And of course, quietly you had Deontay Wilder, who, after Klitschko's retirement, had some success as a title holder, but was never really considered a threat to Klitschko. And while all those guys may have gotten some attention, I can't remember any of them, not a single one, receiving as much hype or promotion as Seth Mitchell. It's easy to forget now, but in the early 2010s, Seth Mitchell was generally considered the most promising American heavyweight prospect. And it's true that I specifically remember several members of the American boxing press touting him as a potential future champion and a genuine threat to Vladimir Klitschko. This is of course quite hilarious in retrospect. In one of the most ironic things I have ever seen in boxing, Mitchell was destroyed in two rounds by Vladimir Klitschko's trainer. I mean, you couldn't make that up. And of course, in terms of hype, there was really no coming back from that. And it was the beginning of the end of Seth Mitchell's career. So Seth Mitchell turned professional in 2008 after a very promising football career that was sadly ended by an injury, as well as a very brief amateur career where he supposedly had a string of knockout victories. So he started boxing very late and really had to be fast-tracked. He started out by fighting a string of lower-level journeymen in fights that there aren't actually much footage of. He actually had a draw very early in his career against a journeyman named Alvaro Morales, which he later avenged winning by unanimous decision in the rematch. He had some brutal knockouts and, as his career went on, he was developing a bit of a reputation as a devastating knockout puncher. He had some wins against some pretty well-known heavyweight journeymen such as Zach Page and Taurus Sykes, but no real noteworthy wins early on. The first serious test of his career came in 2011 when he took on Uzbek heavyweight contender Timur Ibragimov on the undercard of Amir Khan vs Lamont Peterson. The fight was televised by HBO who had been hyping up Seth Mitchell as the next American hope for the division. Ibragimov was more experienced and was coming off of a controversial split decision defeat to Jean-Marc Mormek over in France, and had an extensive amateur background and was considered a serious test for Mitchell. In what turned out to be a surprisingly dominant performance, Seth completely destroyed Ibragimov, stopping him in two rounds, in very impressive fashion. Despite the impressive performance, it was still very unclear whether or not Seth was a serious contender, but one thing that couldn't be denied is that he certainly had serious power. His next fight he took on the tough power puncher Chaz Witherspoon. Witherspoon had an extensive amateur background as well as a long pro career. Mitchell was badly hurt in the first round and almost got taken out. Nonetheless, he survived the round and came back very strongly in the second. Mitchell stopped Witherspoon in the third round. It was actually a great fight while it lasted. With such impressive destructions over seasoned contenders like Ibragimov and Witherspoon, you can see why some boxing fans in America felt that Mitchell had some potential. 
and that he would be a dangerous fight for anybody, at least early on in fights. His power was certainly legit. However, there were still questions about his chin, and being hurt in the first round was certainly a warning sign. After beating Witherspoon, talks began for a potential fight against Vladimir Klitschko for the heavyweight title. In order to build the fight, Mitchell took on the former cruiserweight contender, and then trainer of Vladimir Klitschko, Jonathan Banks. As I mentioned earlier, in one of the most hilarious and iconic things I have ever seen in a boxing ring, after Mitchell dominated the first round, Jonathan Banks came back, and went on to absolutely demolish Mitchell, stopping him in the second round after scoring multiple knockdowns. The funniest thing about this was Vladimir's reaction to it. Several months later, Mitchell and Banks had a rematch, and it was a very weird fight. The fight went the distance with Mitchell avenging the defeat by a wide unanimous decision. Interestingly, after the fight, many people were suspicious that the fight may have been fixed. Seth Mitchell was an Al Heyman and Golden Boy fighter, and had a lot of money behind him. During the fight, there appeared to be several moments where Mitchell was out on his feet, and Banks could have stopped him, but Banks never appeared to go for it. It's definitely suspicious, but I'm not too sure about it. Nonetheless, I pretty much thought at the time, as did most boxing fans, that if he struggled with a guy like Jonathan Banks, then he was never really going to go that far in the heavyweight division, and his punch resistance wasn't going to hold up at world level. For his next and final fight, Mitchell took on the Mexican-American, former heavyweight title challenger Chris Ariola. In a predictable outcome, the fight turned out to be an absolute mismatch, and Ariola stopped Mitchell in the first round. It was a fight that really put any ideas of Mitchell becoming heavyweight champion to bed for good, and he retired shortly after. What fascinates me about Seth Mitchell in retrospect is that him and his stablemate Deontay Wilder actually came up through the ranks together. Both of them turned pro the same year, had the same promoter and the same advisor, and were both American heavyweight prospects in the same era. Yet while both guys were on the come up, it was Seth Mitchell who was genuinely considered the better fighter of the two. Wilder was considered an absolute joke by most American boxing fans, and Mitchell was considered the more serious contender of the two. This is clear when you look at the level of opposition, as well as the overall management of the two. For example, while Deontay Wilder was fighting an absolutely pathetic and disgusting level of opposition, and being protected beyond all belief, Mitchell was actually taking on tough challenges and trying to make a real case for himself, getting a shot at a world title. Unlike Wilder, who was quietly racking up wins against bums while waiting for the Klitschko's to retire so he could snatch a belt, which later of course he did. Mitchell seemed to have genuine confidence in his own ability and seemed to genuinely want to fight the best. Sadly though, Mitchell just didn't have the chin to be a world-class heavyweight. Just like David Price, he had all the physical attributes as well as the right attitude towards the sport, but his glass chin really let him down, making Seth Mitchell one of the classic examples of hype meeting reality. I actually do respect Seth Mitchell for making it as far as he did in boxing despite his lack of chin and amateur experience, so kudos there. Thanks for watching guys, I really enjoyed making this video. Stay tuned for more retrospective boxing videos, let me know what you guys think, thanks for watching, and God bless.